Hi guys, welcome back to Wild Seas. Today, we're out on the shore and we're gonna be collecting and foraging our own bait. We're gonna collect some bait and later on we're gonna go fishing. And we're gonna hopefully catch some fish with the stuff that we collect. Today, we're out here on a rocky shoreline. We're in the intertidal zone, so the area between high tide and low tide. It's low tide at the moment, so it's all exposed. We've got a really diverse and dynamic environment to go and find bait amongst. Um, we've got sort of a boulder field here. Um, so yeah, lots of boulders, there's shallow rock pools, there's some deep rock pools, there's some really kelpy areas. Um, and yeah, lots of different micro habitats for critters to hide amongst. And that's what we're gonna be looking for today. The stuff that the bigger fish at high tide, they're gonna come over here and hunt amongst the rocks and try and find. So we're gonna be looking for crabs, limpets, mussels. You might find some worms, you might find some shrimps. Um, but yeah, great habitat for finding that sort of bait. And we'll be using that bait later to hopefully catch some fish. Um, so let's get amongst it all, see what we can find. Check that little fella out. It's a worm pipe fish. Related to the seahorses. What this seahorse family. Really cool little fella. Often find them amongst the rock pools. Just popping back in there. Let's see what we got. Wow, there's a crabby. Let's get him out. There we go. That's a shore crab. Latin name Carcinus Manus. That's what we're after. Known amongst anglers is the hardback crab. They're a fantastic bait for a number of species, especially big ballon wrasse. You can also catch smooth hounds on these two in certain areas. But yeah, we're gonna pop him in the bucket because he will make a, a couple of baits. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, we've got a rock, free rock. Yeah, there's another one. Good size again. Yeah, another shore crab, and we'll just pop them in a bucket. Got a little bit of water in the bottom with some seaweed. Keeps nice and cool. You can hide amongst the weed. Keeps them calm. There we go. Fish. And there's a cushion starfish. That name Asterina giboza. Quite commonly found on the underside of rocks. Quite often see them. Sometimes you can find a number of them. But yeah, really cool little creature. This is why it's really important to make sure when you're lifting rocks over on the shoreline, you always turn them back over when you finish checking the area. And that's because within this habitat, the underside of rocks are very different from the top side of the rocks. So underneath, they're protected from a lot of the wave action that you get on the shoreline as the tide's coming in. It's also shaded, it's a lot cooler and creates a different habitat for species to live on. So the species that are living on the underside of rocks are not often adapted to living on the upper surface of rocks. So if you're leaving rocks the wrong way up, you end up massively affecting the species that are on top to the point where they probably can't survive on top anymore and they'll end up dying if they're unable to move back around to the other side. So yeah, really important to make sure we turn these rocks back over. Let's do that with this one now. Carefully make sure it goes back the right way. Likewise, the species on top, which are not designed to be on the underside, like seaweeds, they need to be on top to get the sunlight to grow. Uh, and if they're buried underneath the rock, that's no good for them. So yeah, always make sure you're turning rocks back over after you've checked underneath them and try and leave them in the position you found them in. Right, now I've got work cut out here. Lots of crabs. Where did it go? Where? Crabs. Crabs for days. These are the type we don't mind catching. <laughs> Let's see what we can do on this rock. Yeah, mate, there's loads right, under okay. there. Okay. There's loads. Bucket. There's so many. Bucket there as well. There's so many. Oh, oh my days. Oh, wow. Can't keep up with them, there's that many. Oh my god. Ah, ah, it's a 
attack me. So, we've been down here trying to collect bait. Kieran's decided he's had to nip back to the car, leaving us to do all the hard work. Unfortunately, we haven't found anything. So Kieran's now going to show us how to find some crabs. Let's see. You've got to know where to go, boys. You've got to invest your money in the right office, haven't you? Over there, Kieran. The right composition of ground to get the crabs in. Oh, yeah. Trust me, I'm a man that takes a finger to a bag of crabs. It's the spot up here. Crabs, See, where we was, where the boys were looking, they were, they were out of luck, really. The rocks, that the, they were situated on like harder bedrock. It's not really like the ground that the, 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 the hardback crabs find that softer, silty sand and all underneath. Oh, the, right. the, the oh, yeah. So, what yeah, we, we do, find us some, find us some crabs because we haven't yeah, found any yet. Oh, we need to go. We need to go further up the rocks because there's none down there. Bloody hell, Kieran. Come on. We'll be back to the car in a minute. Hang on. It smells like crabs, does it? You've got to get a nose for it, you see. It's empty. We haven't got, we haven't got any. We need some bait, Kieran. Oh, that one's a spicy one. How are we going to catch anything without any bait? Oh, no. These are feisty crab, this one. Come on, put them in here. Here we go. Put them in there. Oh, <laughs> the boys are coming up. Oh, you're putting me a fast one here. He's found the secret stash oh, of crabs. Oh, hell. Well, I think that's more than enough. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I think we don't even need that much. Hello. Coming off! <laughs> For God's sake. Yeah. All these anemones. These are beadlet anemones. Different species to the one we've seen earlier. Is this the same the same species? Yeah, they're just Different a smaller, color. smaller baby, baby version of the bigger ones. Yeah, bright red, loads of stinging tentacles again. Trying to catch little fish as they swim past. Oh, yeah, nice. pretty oh. cool. But yeah, I often find these higher up the shore. Lots of them. And uh, you can see there's lots on the rocks. Underneath. So here's another type of bait we can collect. These are common limpets. If you've ever been to the seaside looking amongst rocks, you would have seen these. Uh, but yeah, type of mollusk, essentially a type of snail. And as the water comes over these rocks, they will lift off, move around, and they'll actually graze on the algae and the bacterial biofilm you get on these rocks. So they're grazers, but they make a great bait, really tough bait, great bait for wrasse. Yeah. Um, but quite hard to remove from the rock. These guys really hunker down, seal themselves in their little micro environment so they can survive being dried out, survive the hot temperatures on a hot day like today. So they do take a bit of force to remove. Uh, best way to do it is to just prise under one edge with a knife, being very careful if you're using a blade, just to break the seal and then oh, yeah. they pop off. So yeah, there we go, there's the limpet. Yeah, you can see this is his foot that he hunkers down to the rock, 
like suction pulls his shell down really tight to the rock to create that little micro environment he lives in until the tide comes back in and he can get on with his with his feeding but yeah we're going to use them as bait we'll show you how to prepare these later when we're when we're down on the rocks fishing um yeah normally out of one this size you can normally get one or two baits out of it so yeah very useful they're in vast quantities on the rocks around here one thing we do say is that we normally only take a couple from each area and then move on and take a couple from another so you're not absolutely hammering like the stocks essentially from one one spot alone let's pop them in the bucket and get a few of these brittle star type of starfish yeah pretty cool to see yeah we used to get loads of these on the boat out in the deeper water and um, yeah fish love feeding on them the haddocks especially bream as well don't see so many of them anymore since uh, we don't get so much cold waters in the winter and uh, with it the brittle stars seem to have disappeared a little bit but yeah pretty cool to see they're slightly bigger oh, common blenny or shanny Urchins. These ones can give you a little nip, so you've got to be careful. This one just had my finger, but always cool what you find underneath the rocks. LRF boys love going after these on little little hooks and baits in the rock pools. We'll pop them back. What you got there? Got an urchin. Sure urchin. I think the Latin name for these are Samachinus miliaris. Really cool Latin name. But yeah, urchins really spiky. Loads of spikes on them have these little tubular legs that poke out between the spines that you use to walk along and graze just like a limpet would graze on the algae and the biofilm that you get on the surface of rocks uh, they're actually related to the starfish part of the starfish family but yeah really cool find there's another one here this one's a little different it's quite hard to see see how he's decorated himself with seaweed and rocks and shells to so form a camouflage whereas this one He's nude, <laughs> so yeah, it's a little more obvious and he's a little easier to find, but yeah, a pair of shore urchins there, really cool little find. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. And a and a thing. What urchin, urchin yeah. Whoa. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool rock. Got a nice little edible crab. A bit bigger than the last one we found and another shore urchin. Look at the life on the bottom of that rock. Yeah. So much life on it. You've got sponges, you've got sea squirts, brittle stars, top shells, limpets. What's that in there? There's a yeah, type of worm, worm there. Ragworm that is, isn't it? There's loads of little barnacly type things as well. I know. Yeah, yeah absolutely full of life. And on the top side, you've got a different assemblage of creatures. You've got this coralline algae purple that grows all over the rocks you've got this coralline algae here as well which is very light and feathery yeah huge number of species hugely biodiverse area the intertidal zones are really important areas for biodiversity but yeah it's just a cool place to go exploring finding lots of species but as i say it's important to try and leave it in good a condition as you found it so that everything can proliferate and can stay as diverse as we find it. Yeah, check out this anemone here. This one is the aptly named strawberry anemone. That's because it looks just like a strawberry. Bright red, lots of little green speckles on it which looks like the seeds of the strawberry. Uh, I believe the Latin name for this one's Actinia fragratia. But yeah, beautiful anemone. And when they're under the water they open up, loads of tentacles, and again, waiting to sting any passers-by and feed on them. Check this stuff out. It's known as rainbow rack, or the name I prefer, magic seaweed. It's a really cool type of algae. You see the beautiful blues and greens on it. Yeah, really magical colors. It's pretty cool because when it's out of the water, it just looks plain brown. Only when viewed underwater do you get this beautiful iridescent blue and green color show on it. But yeah, I believe the Latin name for it is Cisto Sierra Tamarisca folia. But yeah, really cool algae and it really stands out in the rock pool amongst all the other algaes in here. 
Hey, look at this big um, Montague's crab cruising in. He's got some wild colours on him as well. Yeah, look at that. Let's come in to have a look. Yeah, that's... yeah Montague's crab. Look how wide his claws go. Ready to grab ya. <laughs> Put colours on him as well. Off and back. This thing's got some. Tide's coming in. I think it's time to move on before we get cut off. Just going to get some fishing done. So we're at the end of our bait foraging session here. We've actually ended up collecting a lot of crabs as well as some limpets as well. Uh, we spent a little bit longer than what we anticipated uh, down here in the rock poles having some fun. So we don't actually need this many for bait. So we're actually going to pop some back now and only take what we need. We can save these for another day. do us. We've got about, I don't know, 30 crabs or so in there. That's more than enough for a session. We were just walking back along the shoreline, along the high tide mark. We managed to find a number of egg cases, also known as mermaid's purses. But these are the egg cases from types of sharks and types of skate, or as we know them around here, rays. So this one here, this one's from a bull hus. It's a type of cat shark, great spotted cat shark. But yeah, this is uh, what they lay on the seabed. Inside, there'll be a baby shark developing. You see these long, wiry tendrils that come off at either end. These hook around bits of seaweed or bits of rock on the seabed, hook on so they can't wash away in the tide. And inside develops that little shark till it's big enough to break free and grow into a bigger shark. But yeah, that one's from a bull hus. These ones slightly different in shape. You see them all square. And these are from a skate, or as we call them, us anglers call them rays. This particular one's from a small-eyed ray. It's got some little hooks on the bottom to hook onto the seabed with, and these longer horns at the top. There's another type here, you can see it's a different shape. That one's from a spotted ray. But yeah, really cool find, because once the baby ray or baby sharks left the egg case, these end up eventually getting ripped off the seabed in a winter storm. They wash up on the shoreline, dry out, and float to the very top of the shore where you can walk along and find them. Yeah, there we go, mermaid's purses. Yeah, let's get down there. You. Yep. Okay, so we're down on the rocks now. We've foraged our bait, and now it's down to the fishing. Now this kind of fishing, we're trying to emphasize all about simplicity. So I'm gonna show you through a rig that's simple to tie, minimal gear is required to use this rig, and our primary target is RAS today. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tie up a fixed pattern oster, or some people call it a loop rig as well. So um, from my main line, here I've got 15 pound mono uh, you can use for ras you know depending on their size anything really from 10 pound up to well 30 pound plus really depending on the size of ras and the gear and the ground that you're fishing for but today's session is all about just catching a few fish on the bait that we foraged so we're not going to need to go overly heavy We've got quite light rods hopefully we might catch some ras in the sort of like one to three pound plus range so 15 pound line should suffice so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my main line, I'm going to double it up to create essentially a loop. And I want this about a foot, maybe a foot and a half, something like that. You can go longer if you want to suspend your bait higher and get more motion, or you can go shorter if you want to keep it harder to the floor. But I like to tie my rigs about a foot, foot and a half, something like that. So I've doubled it up. I'm now going to hold that and tie an overhand a double overhand knot with, with that doubled up line. So just loop your doubled up line, gonna pass it through once, twice, and then all we do, just lubricate that up a little bit, just to stop the line friction. Pull that nice and tight. And you kinda wanna pull all pieces of the line tight so that knot cinches down nice and tight. I can then trim my tag end off there, just leaving a few mil 
should there be any slippages. And then all I've done is essentially created a loop in my main line. And then what I want to do from this is I want to cut up a few inches from the bottom of the loop. And all that's going to do is ensure that we've got one longer piece of line, which my weight is going to be tied on and one shorter piece, which my hook is going to be tied on. So I'll take my weight, tie him on there. Just a simple blood knot will suffice. Six or so turns on that. And then my hook can go on to the shorter end. Tie that one on there. Hook wise, I'm not going overly big. Um, if I was competition fishing and fishing solely for big wrasse, I might, I might step up my hook size. All I've got here is like a size one short shank sort of crab style hook uh, because we're going to be using some crab as bait and limpet as bait. Now, as you can see my rig here, my weight length is longer than my hook length. So when that lead is cast down onto the bottom, because we're generally fishing in quite close. So that lead might sit at a little bit of an angle like that. Your bait is then suspended just off of the bottom and that will then flow around as the tide swishes back and forth around the kelp and rough ground, essentially where the wrasse live. And then obviously you keep a tight line to your rod tip so that as soon as you get a bite on this, you're going to feel it on the rod tip. Obviously let your bite develop and then strike up into it and you should have a lovely fine fish on the end of it. So let's put this to practice and see what we can essentially hook out. Okay, so here's a top little tip for you when fishing heavier ground with a rig like this. What you can do on your weight length is create a little bit of a weak link. How I like to do that is literally tie maybe one or two granny knots quite close to the lead. This will create a weak link in that piece of line so that if your lead gets caught in the bottom whilst you have a fish on, the lead will break out before the hook length and then you can hopefully retrieve the fish. You can also just maybe put a little ching flatten the line with your teeth just so that you ensure that bit is weaker than any other piece of line on your on your rig body again just a top little tip to make sure you get as many fish on the rocks all right time to bait up let's grab one of our crabs we collected earlier there we go that's a nice sized crab i think we'll prep that into two baits so to do that i'm gonna pop his carapace off Chop him in half quickly. Got two nice sized baits there now. Plenty of juice and scent coming out of them. Hopefully attract the fish over once they smell that. And I'm just gonna pop the hook through its back leg socket and back out. It's a nice tough part to hook the bait on. Yeah, there we go, ready to go. Legs hanging off, plenty of scent coming off. Not so hook on show. That's gonna attract big wrasse and yeah hook points well on show so as soon as something comes and hits it smashes one of the legs hopefully it's going to hook up let's see meanwhile on the other rod i'm going to opt for a limpet bait so i'll just show you quickly how to prepare one of these so turn your lip and limpet upside down use your knife try to cut away from you it's all, all, always safer to do so and what you're going to do is you're just going to run your edge of your knife along the shell just breaking that seal that the limpet has to its shell and just work your way around until you worked all the way around like so. And as you flip that over, you'll see it's full of nice juicy goodness, which the wrasse absolutely love. Now you can fish this whole or like I like to do, I like to cut them in half, especially at the start of the session when we want to just try and find some fish and find some bites, maybe a smaller bait will work. And all I'm going to do then is thread that onto the hook just pop the eye of the hook down so it sort of hangs like that. Lots of hook on show. Nice little package for a rash just to come and bosh, strike into it and we should have a lovely rash on. Let's cast these out, Liam. Let's go. It's got it and it's moving up with it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's oh. a good fish. Woo. Whoa, whoa. Not a bad fish. Oh, I missed a bite. Oh, he's got no. me in. Yeah, he's reefed me. Yeah, we're back on, we're back on. Oh, oh, he's got me in his hole, I can't believe it. So I'm just gonna drop him slack, try and let him like run out, tighten my drag up a bit. 
Might have to change angle breeze. This is a good fish. I'm gonna have to change angle. Try see if I can drag him out. Oh, I can't believe that. Wait, that was a big fish. He's still on it, he's still on it. Yep. yep. Yes. Yep. Yes. Big, good fish, what good we fish. Got? Oh yeah. Woo! Oh yeah. Yeah, that'll do. Man, that fort load's bigger than what I thought it was. Prime Cornish Balin Ras. Just look at the colours on these fish. And these are just one of those fish you don't need particularly a lot of tackle to target and they provide great sport as you've seen on this fish. You know, it's only, I don't know, it's no monster, maybe just under three pounds or something like that. But it had me in the reef there for a minute. Incredible sport and incredible markings. And the best thing about these is that they go back really well. So I'm gonna release this one now, back for another day. Go. Bosh, gone, straight away. Woo! So the best thing about racing is you don't need to cast particularly far. That's what makes it so easy to target for beginners and experienced anglers alike. Just simply a swing out, finding gullies and ledges that you're gonna find kelp and holes where these rats live. Bite on straight away. Feels like little rats plucking it. But then that better rats I had a minute ago didn't particularly give me a big bite. Oh, there's bites on here. There's Whoa. bites on there. Little Ras. Gonna let it develop till I'm confident that it's on. Oh, oh Liam just it, got hit straight it. away. Drop him right down. Sometimes just a little lift of the rod tip and drop back down just encourages a bite as that bait flies around in the tide and the movement. Oh, here we go. Ras are quite a predatory fish. They'll ambush stuff that's in their territory. Sometimes that little bit of movement just encourages them to hit. This is the one. That's the, that's the swing that is, isn't it? That is what we call in the pit. So I'm just dropping the bait down and I'm just reeling the rod tip just tight so I'm in uh, in contact with the with the weight on the bottom so I can feel any plucks from any fish. Just got a little pluck there straight away, small ones. Oh. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, he's moving with it. Back on it, back on it. Oh, <laughs> just looking for that bite that I'm really confident with. I like it when they're moving with it, either up or down, rather than just the plucks. There we go, and we'll fish on. Not a very big one, but you can see it's biting around a fair bit. No doubt a lovely little Balin Ras. There we go. Lovely little Balin Ras. That, this one was on crab. Just half a little crab. Bites almost straight away. Then the little plucks. Oh, there we go. This time I've put on a slightly smaller bait, used half a limpet maybe to connect with a few more of those smaller bites. Yes, fish on. On the limpet this time. Oh, you wouldn't believe this. What we have here is a female cuckoo ras. So that was really cool to catch from underneath our feet. We catch quite a few of these in the deeper water down here on the rougher ground and on the scuddy ground. But you can see there the piece of limpet on my hook that we foraged earlier and a beautiful little female cookie wrasse. 
really stunning deep red colour on this fish. Where he goes. Oh. Liam, oh. yes! Yeah! Woo! Liam's got a whipper snapper on. There we go. What we got? It's a little balan bass, I reckon. Fish is off though. No way! Oh, male, nice male cuckoo, cuckoo rass. Rass. <laughs> On crab. Check that mate, out. That yeah, must maybe. Have been the pair. Look at the colours on it. Check that out. Beautiful male cuckoo rass. The beautiful oranges and blues. Yeah, quite different from the females who are orangey, pinky, red all over. The males have these beautiful blue and orange markings. Yeah, really awesome to see, especially below our feet. Usually you catch them a little further out in slightly deeper water. But yeah, these guys are obviously hunting around the rocks looking for crabs and limpets and bits and bobs to eat. Yeah, we'll pop him off the hook. Pop him back. Awesome. Yes, Liam. Yeah. Liam, that's good fish. Yeah. Keep him coming. Yes. Oh. Good fish. Oh. Oh yeah, that's him. That's oh. him. Oh, that's it's him. A Oh, it's a lump. Do you want me to help land yeah. it? Yeah, then we get down there, I'll come get me that rock pool. Yeah, one sec. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's a lump. Liam, that's a big fish. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! Come on! <laughs> the beauty. What really was nice the rash? Oh, mate, he's, yeah, he's, oh, he's five yeah, pounds. Oh, yeah, five pounder and fifty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 50 centimetre wrasse. Yeah. And he's he's really fat as well. So yeah, right. gotta be five pounds. Not here, Liv. That is a lump of a balin wrasse. Absolute beauty. Kieran actually spotted the fish swimming around along the ledges of the rocks. So uh thought I'd best turn up, poach his spot and pull it out. And yeah, dropping down a whole crab. He's just come and nailed it. He nicked a few of our baits. We had some good bites and then eventually we hooked him up. What a beautiful fish. Lovely fight, really strong head shakes, and yeah, pulled up a beautiful baling ras. It's got to be about five pounds. Measures 50 centimetres long, so yeah, lovely specimen. Absolute bruiser. Oh. That back one, again, it's back again. Hit. Oh. Lifting it up. Oh, oh. Oh, oh Liam's on. Big rig. Oh, Big rig. Then no. Oh. 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 Yeah, nice. Nice fish. Oh, -hoo -hoo. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Nice pattern on this one. Yep. Kieran's. Oh. That one snaffled that crab bait. Oh, big rig. Big rig. Beautiful. Oh. Kieran's getting bites. Plenty of fish here. Let's pop him back. Yeah. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> Mate, look at the colours on this one. Really dark coloured one. Rats are always spirited though. Really dark. Back. Oh, yeah. Oh, kick it off. Oh, it's a lump. It's a lump. Big oh, head. Yeah. Oh, no way. <laughs> Liam's on the monsters. <laughs> We're going to try and lift it. That's a lump, isn't it? Try and put him into that rock pool. You don't want to be a crab when that one's around. It's just going to munch you. Awesome. Again. That was on a whole crab. Not a massive crab, quite a small crab, but yeah, scoffed it down. Beautiful fish and a great fight. Tasty. Let's pop him back. Yeah, boy. 
Yes. Oh, what is this? Big rig. How big? Oh, oh, oh! oh. <laughs> Woo! That's a good one. Go this way. <laughs> So nice harass for me here. This one's probably around four pound or so. Really stocky, fattened up fish. Took one of our whole crabs, bashed it. Really good, solid fight as they dive for the kelp. But yeah, really happy with this fish. Really nice fish by anyone's standards. We're gonna pop him back now. Yeah, boy. Okay, guys, that's the end of today's session. Me and Liam, we both had some incredible fun on minimal kit. Literally, all we had was some weights, some hooks, and our rods and reels. And the beauty of this kind of fishing is it doesn't really matter what level of tackle you have. You can get away with some beginner setups and your weights and your hooks and catch some fish. We caught all of today's fish on our forage bait that we got earlier in the day. Crabs and limpets was doing the damage. We both managed some solid balling wrasse each. And we had quite a few numbers in the end. And on top of that, we had a bonus cuckoo wrasse, both male and female, which was pretty cool to see. We didn't really expect it too much, but that was pretty cool to see. Make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel to find out what else we get up to on our adventures. That's today's session over, home time for us.